Picture this. You're alone, slouching over your desk at 1am. You're working on a paper that's due in 6 hours while running on only 3 hours of sleep. That 6th cup of coffee is barely keeping your eyes open. Once you finish cramming, you still got 2 exams tomorrow that you have yet to study for. And on top of all this, you haven't had the time for your hobbies or social life all week. Sound familiar? Don't worry, I've been there too. There is no doubt that vet school will occupy a huge part of your life. From meeting the academic demands of your classes to balancing your personal life, it seems almost inevitable to get burned out at one point or another. But what if there was a way to avoid all this? What is the secret to surviving in vet school, improving your physical and mental health, all while enjoying a work-life balance? Today, I'll be going over the five game-changing habits that have helped me survive vet school. What's poppin' y'all? My name's Roque. I'm an incoming first year proper vet student and I make videos online about animals and vet school content. If you wanna learn more about animals or vet school, then consider subscribing so that you can join me on my journey towards becoming a vet. Okay, now you're probably wondering, why are habits so game-changing? Well, I think it's important to first define what habits are. Habits are the little things that we do each day that are, well, habitual. They are often mindless actions that we automatically do, such as brushing our teeth after meals, closing doors behind our backs, and even scrolling through social media during Zoom meetings. Don't lie, because I know we all do this. Now, while these might seem like minute things that we do on the reg, do not underestimate them. Our entire lives are basically a combination of our experiences and the little habits that we do each day. One of the best analogies for habits, in my opinion, comes from James Clear in one of my favorite books of all time, Atomic Habits. Clear explains that performing habits are somewhat similar to changing a trajectory of an airplane. Labo no, but hold up, let me explain. Let's say that a plane from Manila is headed towards Tokyo. If a pilot were to make a small 5% adjustment to the route, the plane might just end up in Korea. It's the little changes that make the biggest differences, and habits are no different. If we shift our focus towards building better habits and making 1% improvements each day, by the end of the year, we would have been 37 times better than the year before. Okay, so quick story time. Back in high school, I was far from an ideal student. I was constantly cramming homework at the last minute. Failing exams for me were a norm. I was severely overweight. The end of the bench was my home for the baseball team. I was out partying at every opportunity I could find. I was going nowhere. It had gotten so bad that I actually distinctly remember a teacher telling me that if I kept this up, I would flunk out of high school and become a complete bum. It was not until I decided to prioritize improving my life by making small changes. Soon after, I ended up graduating from high school, dropping 35 pounds and improving as an athlete, getting a full scholarship in the top university of the Philippines by playing baseball, and making both my parents and myself proud of who I was. I owe that major character development to the habits that I built over the years. So, now that you understand the importance of building good habits, here are the five habits that I found to be the most impactful during my first two years of vet school. Number one is to prioritize your health. Now, I know this seems like a no-brainer, but I placed this first because it's arguably one of the most important ones. Throughout the course of our entire lives, we only have one body, one brain, one heart, one mind. There is no separation from our body and consciousness. If we want to be the best version of ourselves, we need to prioritize our health. And this includes both our physical and mental health. Let's start with physical health. There are tons of ways that you could improve your physical health with habits such as drinking enough water, doing moderate to light exercise every day, being more mindful of your diet, and getting an ample amount of sleep. I won't get too deep into the options here, but whatever your choice may be, all of these options can substantially improve your longevity and state of mind. Speaking of which, let's not forget the other half of the health pie, your mental state. 
Due to the pandemic, we've seen an astonishing rise in mental health issues all across the globe. According to DOH, at least 3.6 million Filipinos have been experiencing some type of mental health issues since 2020, and that's more than twice the population of Manila City. To add to all this, a study conducted by the American Veterinary Medical Association states that over 15% of veterinary professionals experience psychological illnesses. That's basically one in every six veterinarians. Mas lalo pa ang mga vet students since wala tayong kinikita, di ba? But with this knowledge in mind, we should make it a top priority to make sure that our headspace is in check. Read a couple of pages of your favorite book. Go for a walk to decompress from all the studying. It can feel overwhelming to change your entire lifestyle all at once. So what I would recommend is to choose one area of your health that you think needs the most worth and to work on the others as you go along. By creating time in our day to prioritize our health, we can make substantial improvements in both our psychological and physiological health. Speaking of creating time, let's move on to our next habit, organizing and systemizing. Have you ever tried riding a unicycle across a tightrope with a thousand foot drop underneath? Chances are, your answer is probably no. But TBH, honestly, vet school can make it seem like you're doing just that. Between studying for exams, writing lab reports, and learning the latest TikTok dance trend, you'll have to account for dozens of important tasks in order to stay on top of things. That's why it's so important to organize and systemize your life to bring order to all of this chaos. There are countless ways that you can do this, but in my opinion, there are two non-negotiable ones that are essential to living a more organized life, and they are having a to-do list and a calendar. First, let's talk about the importance of a to-do list. The amount of requirements that vet school has is no joke. Exams, research papers, and lab reports quickly stack up. And if you don't have a centralized place to keep track of all of them, there will be surely some that slip through the cracks. Which is why it's integral to have some kind of task management system to help you stay on top of your game. I personally use a digital task management app called Todoist, mainly because it syncs through my phone and laptop so that I can access it anytime, anywhere. There are tons of videos regarding to-do lists, so you can either go ham on that search bar on YouTube or comment down below on which task management app you want me to try out. Listen, I'm sure we've all heard the saying, what gets measured gets done. So whether you have the latest task management app or a simple pen and paper, it's absolutely essential to list down everything you need to do so that you actually do it. Next, we have the good old calendar. Okay, so raise your hand if you bought a new planner, filled out the first two weeks of the year, and then left all of the other pages blank and rotting in your cabinet. J just me? Liars! We all know how important it is to list down your classes for the semester and create a schedule. Many of us go on insert scheduling app here and create this aesthetic schedule that we keep on our phone lock screen. Now, while it's important to know your schedule and who your professor is, that's basically like the bare minimum. Of course, you're gonna remember to go to class because if you don't, you'll fail. But what about all of your other priorities? What about the run to the groceries that you'll need to do this week? Or that date that you agreed to go on last month? Yee! This is exactly why it's important to have a good calendar so that you can stay on top of all your academic requirements while also keeping your personal and social events in check. I use Google Calendar for the same reason that I use Todoist, multi-device integration. But just to set the record straight, it honestly doesn't matter whether you're using an analog or digital planner to schedule your entire life. What's important is that you both use and stick to it. The hell is this? Like the American founding father Benjamin Franklin once said, failing to plan is planning to fail. So make sure that you place major importance in harnessing your planning and systemizing your skills so that you can live a happier and more balanced life. Unless of course you're a master of balance like let's say a professional unicycler. And if that's the case, shoot me a DM because I have a lot of questions for you. So now that you've prioritized staying healthy and organized, how do you know if it's actually working for you? How do you know if you're really improving or just wasting time on the latest productivity trend? 
the only way to truly know is by checking your engine. Di yung literal na makina sa kotse, I mean reviewing your performance. Sitting down and asking yourself, did I actually do what I said I was going to do? What are the areas of improvement that I need to focus on? Yeah, this sounds boring. And honestly, most times, it is. However, this is the only true way to check if you've been making progress and to understand what your weaknesses are. Not only will these engine checks help you understand your flaws, but they can also serve as great motivators to see just how far you've come. This is generally why I prefer apps for my productivity system because they can give you detailed statistics on your performance and shortcomings. Funny enough, that's exactly why I started this channel so that I can document all of my successes and failures and I can look back at them for the years to come. So if you want to stay updated on my journey and so that you can stay one step ahead of the vet school game, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a video. Anyway, there's this quote from George Santayana in his book The Life of Reason and it goes, Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And I think that this works perfectly with this concept of checking your engine because if you can't reflect on your past, how can you possibly improve your future? Speaking of reflection, let's go over this next keystone habit which I find absolutely essential for surviving vet school and that is going within. Look, now I know a lot of you guys might think all of these spiritual practices are a bunch of mumbo jumbos for hippies but hear me out. Mindfulness practice has been used for centuries and has a bunch of research and science-based evidence that simply cannot be ignored. An article published by the National Center of Complementary and Integrative Health claims that meditation and mindfulness practice can help reduce mental health disorders and blood pressure while also improving focus, sleep, and weight management. If these benefits don't make you at least consider mindfulness practice, then I don't know what will. Personally, I've been meditating since 2016, and since then, I've seen substantial improvements in my mood, focus, confidence, and stress reduction since implementing it to my daily schedule. The most common practice is meditating, but contrary to common knowledge, mindfulness practice can come in a multitude of ways and not just sitting down in silence. You can journal, paint, play an instrument, work out, or anything that keeps your focus on one activity while silencing your own thoughts. Lastly, we have our fifth secret, which is equally if not more important than all the previous ones, and that is developing a growth mindset. Albert Einstein said it best in one of his quotes, intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death, and I couldn't agree more. Throughout the years of our personal accomplishments, it can be so easy to become complacent. Being top in our class makes us feel smart. Reading tons of books makes us feel knowledgeable. Finishing 25 hot dogs in 12 minutes makes us feel like a champion. Which I am, by the way, and nobody can take that away from me. But the reality is, nothing we've done in the past makes us deserving of our future. It's what we do today that will bring us one step closer to our goals. This is why it's important to never stop learning. You completed a course on physiology? Great. Now it's time to learn the physio of all the other species. Your study techniques work for you in high school? Good on you! But how about finding more efficient methods of learning so that you can reduce the amount of time studying? The truth is, there's always a higher ceiling to reach and you should never become complacent because of your past achievements. The moment we stop growing is the moment we stop learning. Now I know that all these five secrets aren't exactly the most actionable steps that you could take, but these definitely are useful mindsets and practices that you could implement into your life to make vet school that much easier. Building a habit is about creating a series of small but impactful choices. Every decision we make either pushes us closer to the ideal person we want to become or drive us further away. The thing is, I'm still far from that ideal person. I didn't make this video to act as if I got everything figured out because that couldn't be further from the truth. I've got many bad habits and weaknesses that I still need to figure out. I just wanted to share some of the habits and mindsets that I've implemented into my life that has helped me survive the first two years of vet school. I can't say which specific method will work for you, so it's important to try out different methods and find which one suits you. Remember, 
being a vet or vet student is just a part of your life, not the entirety. Whether you're a child, parent, lover, or K-drama binger, you are so much more than just a vet student. So try out which works best for you. Make marginal improvements on the daily and bring yourself one step closer to your ideal self. If you found this video helpful, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because it really helps me out. And as always, I'll see y'all in the next one. Deuces!